There's a red one over there, but there's more people around it. So let's check out this blue one. Here's the start stop button in red. I don't think the key is in here, so. Oh, but did I just turn it on? I think I did. Interesting. Um, do I do this and get in trouble? So we got an invite from Mouse Motors to the McLaren Artura event here in downtown Chicago. Drove down in the R8, which is my nicest car, but it's a little bit out of place in this lineup, which I'll show you guys in a moment. The Artura is the new hybrid McLaren sports car, so really looking forward to checking that out. It's inside, but uh, you gotta check out some of the cars that are here. here we have a McLaren 720S, 675 LT, my R8, a 720S, a 765 LT, and then a McLaren P1. I haven't seen this one before. It's got a really cool livery on it. Check out the carbon fiber up front. McLaren P1 is one of those dream poster cars, the hypercar, the hybrid hypercar holy trinity with the LaFerrari 918 Spider. Look at that wing. Yeah, okay. So there's a McLaren P1, and then arguably even more extreme, a McLaren Speedtail. This thing is like an alien spaceship. Just look at how long it is, and also it's got flexible body panels here for this like rear wing. The Speedtail is immensely long, like a top speed focus car, and just it looks unbelievable. It's a three-seater with central seating, just like the McLaren F1. And instead of side view mirrors, these are the cameras for side view mirrors. Got like the aero cover for the front wheel too. The speed tail was certainly crazy. This is my third one that I've seen. One in Dubai, one in Columbus at a triple F, and now this one here with Mouse Motors. And, and, if you look really closely, you'll see the carbon fiber weave. You see that texture? From far away, if you're not looking at this really up close, you can't even tell, but it's such a tight weave. That's full exposed carbon fiber. What a crazy spaceship looking car. Just this parks next to the P1. Holy crap. Let's go inside. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, celebrations marking the long-awaited arrival of the newest member of the McLaren family. My name is Nicholas Brown, President of McLaren Americas. Thank you for joining us. So the McLaren Artura event is wrapping up, which means people are trickling out, the music has stopped, which means now I get to get some video walking around checking out the cars on display from Mouse Motors, but also we will check out the McLaren Artura, the new hybrid McLaren. But before we get to them, you see there's one parked right there, we gotta look at some of the other cars that are on display because it's a awe-inspiring sight. The P1 outside is a special edition P1, it's a Prost edition. That one is special. The speed tail is cool, but wait till you see what's in here. On the right side, we've got some race cars, classic cars, but we'll come back to that. First things first, we're gonna make a beeline for this, the McLaren F1. We actually saw this a couple weeks ago at the Triple F Collection event in Columbus, Ohio, but this is chassis number one, McLaren F1. Anytime you get to see an F1 is an epic time because this is legendary absolutely legendary a mclaren f1 it's crazy the fact that i've gotten to see this car a bunch of times out here in the chicago area and columbus kind of blows my mind because i went the first like 20 years of my life never even seeing a mclaren f1 three seats with the central steering wheel and then we have a 
722S. So this is an SLR. If you don't know, Mercedes and McLaren partnered to build the SLR. And this one is a very unique shade of orange. And I believe the 722 was the more hardcore performance iteration. This one's a convertible. There we go, an SLR, which is also a remarkably amazing car. <laughs> like, just seeing any sort of SLR is cool, let alone one like this, parked next to the F1. And then we have a 688 MSO High Sport. So they took essentially, <laughs> the 675 LT is not the top iteration of the 650S platform. It is this car here, the High Sport. I believe 25 were built. And this one is finished in white with green carbon fiber. So you see MSO High Sport. We've got the fender vents here, the McLaren badge here, which is, that's a total custom touch. But man, this is, this is a crazy iteration on the 650S platform. They actually have these info cards here, which you can see. Yep, 25 were built with the 3.8, 688 High Sport with the larger fixed wing out back. But wait till you see this. Green carbon fiber. It's gorgeous. I really do hope the camera is capturing this entire rear fascia here is green exposed weave carbon fiber. The wing also has that green carbon. I think every piece of carbon on this car is green, which is just wow. So as a U of M grad, University of Michigan, I kind of have to hate anything green and white because of MSU. Not that I care that much about sports. This is just an absolutely gorgeous spec. And then it gets even better because here's a McLaren Elva, full carbon fiber McLaren Elva. The Elva is the convertible, roofless, windshieldless speedster. And this one is completely exposed in carbon fiber, which is also amazing. Even the badge here, check out the McLaren badge. It's like forged carbon or something. I think that's forged carbon. Crazy, you can see the texture. Everything on this is exposed carbon fiber. And the cool thing on the Elva is it blends the exterior and interior. So you see how the carbon just cascades down across the dashboard, the instrument cluster there, the center console. Usually it's painted body color, but this one is just all carbon fiber. So that's a pretty cool lineup of McLaren road cars. And this, well, people are checking it out right now. This is the new McLaren Artura. We'll come back to the Artura. Here we have a lineup of race cars. This is, I believe, a 1998 F1 car. Yep. 760 horsepower and 1,300 pounds. They built seven of these, the MP4 slash 13. That is just a badass statue. So I believe this one was driven by Senna himself, which is again, legendary. And then going even further back, this is a 1974 Formula One car, the McLaren M23. Here, I don't even know what this is, I'll be honest. Like I might've seen this at, or something like this at Monterey Car Week one year at the McLaren house. I got a tour from Amanda McLaren one year, which is a crazy experience, but it's the M6 GT designed by Bruce McLaren himself. Yeah, this is crazy. But here is the Artura. There's a red one over there, but there's more people around it. So let's check out this blue one. So the Artura is the new hybrid McLaren sports car. This effectively replaces the 570S series, the sport series, ending with the 600 LT. McLaren says this previews the future of the brand. I personally really like the styling. The front end has that 720S styling with like the socket headlights where it's like recessed into the bumper. It looks really aggressive to me. This blue paint, the lights have actually dimmed a bit. You can still see some of the metallic flake on this blue paint. McLaren paints are just absolutely gorgeous. So from the front end, unmistakably McLaren. To me, I see a lot of 720S styling cues here. Got carbon ceramic brakes, large rotors up front. I believe actually, this is a hybrid, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have regenerative braking to help with the brake fuel. And also for the first time on a non-LT model, you've got the fender vents. Usually they reserve that for like the 600LT iteration. We're gonna go ahead and close the door open it in a moment. It does have soft closed doors. The large intake on the side here. As with a lot of the newer McLarens, you really can't see much of the engine. There's a lot hiding here. It's not like on a Huracan we can open the giant glass engine bay. Coming around to the back, I see a lot of Elva and some of the, like the 765 LT styling here with this metal mesh grill with the hexagonal pattern. Dual exhaust with the badge right in the middle, Artura. McLaren Chicago, our local McLaren dealership out here. Now let's go ahead and check out the interior. So go ahead, 
Open up the door. Look at this. So it's redesigned again. The instrument cluster is different. Ooh, look at that startup. Nice. It's challenging to get in because it's a carbon tub car. They do a good job opening out this footwell area for you to step in, but it's by no means something that's easy to fall into, right? It's, it is to a mid-engine supercar. It does get a little easier getting in. This is like my fourth or fifth time climbing in. It was a lot easier. The door has this big like glowing light, ambient lighting loop, which is pretty cool. Bowers and Wilkins sound system, and you heard the door soft close. The handle's moved a little bit, I think. It's a little latch right here. Pull that, opens up your dihedral doors, which are always cool. Doors that go up are just better. Here's the start stop button in red. I don't think the key's in here, so. Oh, but did I just turn it on? I think I did. Interesting. Um, do I do this and get in trouble? Electric start not available. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> We've got some updates to the interior of this new McLaren generation. So the infotainment screen here, again, the full digital screen, but now I believe the active panel is gone. These are the toggles on the left and right side for controlling uh, drivetrain and that, those sort of settings. And here's something about modern McLarens I like a lot, the paddle, oh. They're like metal and they have this really nice texture to them. They're like smooth here, minus sign etched there, the plus sign, I've got texture on the back end. But what I was saying is McLaren paddle shifters you can use with one hand. So if I want to downshift, I can pull, that gives me a downshift, but I can also push it for an upshift. Same thing with the right paddle shifter. I can pull for an upshift or push to give me a downshift. And you can see when I, when I pull this one, the left paddle shifter is moving because it's all on one big rocker system. So that's a really cool thing that newer McLarens have had. Really simple steering wheel. Again, there's, there's, there's nothing. Whereas on a Ferrari, every single thing is on the steering wheel, right? The traction switch and all sorts of things, your headlights, everything is on the steering wheel. On the McLarens, it's just the steering wheel. Paddle shifters here. Looks like I started in electric start not available. This is a hybrid now. So hybrid battery and also gas engine is a twin turbo V6. We have a newer infotainment screen here. The control looks like it's moved to the right side. It's a volume one or there's a button. Oh, yep. So that's on the left side. And I believe it should also be touch. Yep. Vehicle is not available because yes, it's off right now. But hopefully when we get to drive one, we'll get to play with that a little bit more. Transmission selector here. Nice suede lining here, the seats too, with this orange accent that's echoed across the interior on the seats. Nice little cargo space in the back, a little shelf. And then that orange accent is across the center dash here. This is all covered in suede, one of those Bauer & Wilkins sound system speakers up there. That like light surrounding the door is pretty cool because you can see it from outside when the door is open. I like that. This is a nice interior. I like it. McLaren's really advanced from the 12C, which is now starting to date a little bit. But this is a, a step up from the 570S generation for sure. I like this interior. But I'm also a bit of a McLaren fanboy. I will fully I will fully admit that. The taillights are illuminated right now with the vehicle on. It really reminds me of the Elva. I think it looks awesome. Just menacing like thin slits here. Like two eyes staring at you. So there's the back end. And look at the doors. You can see the light rings, the ambient lighting. Little loops there. Frameless doors too. And then coming around front, the headlights are on. See, it really resembles the 720S to me. If you, if you come back here, if you look at it from like 15 feet away, imagine it driving away, that really does resemble 720S, which is good. McLaren family styling, they keep it consistent. I like the way this thing looks a lot. Now, what I don't know is how good does it drive? We're not driving it right now, just checking it out. Uh, and obviously I wanna hear it. I heard a couple before at the Triple F collection event. They had two on display from McLaren that they started up and revved a bit. And it's a twin turbo V6. So we'll see how it performs, how it sounds. Got these two flying buttresses out back too. Pretty cool. Big piece of windshield glass there. I'm sure they're gonna be doing an Artura Spider at some point. And I imagine we'll get a high performance like LT hardcore track focus iteration also. But here it is, the all new McLaren Artura. The future of the brand, hybrid. So if you think about it, the Artura is really like 
a baby version of the McLaren P1. It's the, the essence of the P1 distilled down a hybrid supercar, whereas the P1 is like hypercar level. So this is much more affordable and more reasonable, but it's still really cool. I am really looking forward to driving an Artura at some point. There's all this new wave of hybrid supercars. Ferrari has it now, the 296. I was talking to one of the guys from Mouse Motors who got to drive the Artura for a bit, and he spent time in P1, all the crazy cars that Mouse Motors has. And he said some of the little, he called it like the, the nuances, the features and like the little special touches did remind him a bit of the P1. So that's a pretty cool piece of information. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was an amazing event. Thank you so much to McLaren Chicago and Mouse Motors for the invite, letting me come check out some of these cars, got to see some friends, catch up, and again, just drool over some amazing pieces of McLaren history and the newest and greatest pieces of McLaren technology. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.